In the last lecture, we learned how to create a custom validator in Angular. Now in this lecture, you're going to learn what is an async validator and how to create and use it. We use async validator when we need to send an HTTP request to the server to check if the data which the user has inputted inside a form control, if that data is valid or not. So basically, when we send an HTTP request to the server, the server might take some time in sending the response. And once we have the response, then only we can validate whether the data entered in a form control is valid or not. For that, we use async validator. Now, creating an async validator is very similar to creating a sync validator. The only difference is that the async validator must return either a promise or an observable. And another point to keep in mind is that Angular does not provide any built-in async validator. In Angular, all the built-in validators are sync validators. For example, the required validator, the email validator, min and max validator, all these are sync validators. Angular does not have any built-in async validators. But Angular do allow us to create our own custom async validators and use it on a form control or a form group. So in this lecture, let's see how we can create and use an async validator in Angular. So here we have our form. And in this form, we also have this username input element. Now, when the user is registering using this registration form, at that time, user has to provide a username. Now, that username must be unique for each user. So if the user is providing a username which already exists for another user, then our application should not allow that user to use that username. For that, what we need to do is, as soon as the user has entered a username, we need to check whether with that username, a user already exists or not in the database. If there is already a user with that username, in that case, we will show an error message that the username is already taken. Otherwise, with that username, if the user does not exist, then we will allow the user to use that username. Now, here for this application, I'm not using any backend database or any API, but we are going to simulate that situation. So what we are going to do is, we are going to create a function and let's create that function inside this file itself, inside this no space allowed.validator.ts file. There, I'm going to create a function. And we will assume that this function is an API to which we are making a call from our Angular application. So here, let's create a function and let's call this function username allowed. You can name this function anything. And this function is going to receive a username. And it is going to be of type string. All right. Now inside this function, Let's first create a variable. Let's call it taken usernames. And to this, let's assign an array. So basically, this data, the taken usernames, we will read it from the database. But here, since we don't have any database for this application, we are going to make use of this array. And inside this array, we are going to specify some usernames, which is already taken. For example, John Smith, Manoja, and Sarah King. Okay, so these three are the usernames, which is already taken. So a user should not be able to register with any of these usernames. All right. Now what we are going to do is from within this function, we are going to return a promise. For that, we are using this promise constructor. And to this constructor, we need to pass a callback function. And this callback function is going to receive two arguments, resolve and reject now inside this function i am going to use set timeout function to simulate this situation where the response is going to take some time to reach the client so to the set timeout also we need to pass a callback function and we also need to pass a time interval let's say 5000 milliseconds that means five seconds okay so let's say from our client we are making a request to this api username allowed and this api is going to return us a response after five seconds so after five seconds this callback function will be executed and from within this callback function we are going to return some data now inside this callback function what we are going to do is we are going to check if the username which we are receiving here for this method if it already exists inside this 
taken username array so here we will say taken usernames dot includes and to this we are going to pass this username so if inside this array we already have an element with the username value in that case this includes method will return true otherwise it will return false so if it returns true that means with this username there is already a user which exists in that case we are going to return a promise and with that promise we are going to return an object and in this object we are going to specify an error code let's say the error code is check username and we are going to set it to true all right but if with this username there is no user inside this taken username array in that case we want to return another data so in that case also we are going to return a promise for that i am going to call this resolve method and we want to resolve it to null that means there is no user with the given username inside this taken usernames array okay let's save the changes inside this function now we are going to create an async validator and we are going to create that async validator inside this custom validators class so after this no space allowed validator again we are going to create another validator and as we have learned earlier a validator is nothing but a method so here i am going to create a static method i am going to call it check username okay now here we need to specify a parameter for this check username so on whichever form control or form group or form array we will use this check username we are going to receive that form control form array or form group as a parameter for this check username method so here i am going to call it as control and it should be of type abstract control and in order to use this abstract control we also need to import it from angular slash forms okay so since we are using this abstract control we can use this validator on form group form array or form control because form group form array and form control it is a child class of this abstract control class all right now from within this function we are simply going to call this username allowed function so let's call this username allowed function and to this we need to pass a value for this username parameter right so this control if it is of type form control then it will have a value property and that value property will store a primitive value like string value number boolean etc so whatever value is set for the value property of that control we want to assign it to this username so here i'll simply say control dot value so for example let's say if we use it on a form control the form control will have a value property and that value property will store the value which we have entered inside that form control and we want to pass that value we want to assign that value to this username parameter now this function here this username allowed function it is going to return us a promise because from here we are returning a promise right and as we have learned earlier an async validator must return a promise or an observable so here this async validator it is going to return a promise of type any all right and we want to return that promise from within this validator method and that's it in this way we have created an async validator and an async validator must return a promise or an observable here what it is going to return if the username which we have passed to this username allowed function if it exists inside this array in that case it is going to return a promise with this data otherwise it is going to return a promise with the value null okay now let's save the changes and let's go ahead and let's use this check username validator on the username form control so let's go to app component.ts here we have the username form control there we are passing the first argument as null so we don't want to set any default value and 
the second argument which we pass to a form control should be a list of sync validators which we want to use on that form control now on this username form control we don't want to use any sync validator or if we want we can use the required validator on this username so let's go ahead and let's use validators dot required so this required it is a built-in validator and it is a sync validator so the second argument which we pass to the form control it is a sync validator or a list of sync validator like we are passing here to this email form control here we are passing multiple validators so we have wrapped it within an array so here the second parameter is a list of sync validator and for username we are passing only a single validator and that is also a sync validator and the third argument for the form control is a list of async validator now here on this username we want to use this check username async validator so we need to pass it as the third argument and we need to access it on this custom validators class so here we can say custom validators dot check username okay so keep in mind that the async validator should be the third parameter the third argument to the form control with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let's go to elements tab here and here we have the username input element so let me expand that and currently you will notice that on this username field currently the state is it is untouched it is pristine and ng invalid has been added because on this username we have used the required validator now let's go ahead and let's enter some username so let's say john smith now you will notice that on this this ng pending css class has been added and after five seconds you can see ng invalid css class has been added now this ng invalid css class is there because this john smith this username already exists in this array as you can see so that is not allowed username and that's why here we can see ng invalid css class added and you can also see the red border here but if i go ahead and if i enter some other username which is not available inside that array for example maybe xyz it will take five seconds to validate that and for that five seconds this ng pending css class will be added and after five seconds once the data is validated so after five seconds this xyz this value will be checked with this array in this array we don't have any username with the value xyz so in that case it is returning null and in that case the data is valid so now you will not see any red border here but if i enter a username which already exists for example manojha again you will see this ng pending for five seconds and after five seconds when the data will be validated now you will see ng invalid okay so this is how we can create and use an async validator now if you want you can also use the ng pending css class to show a yellow border by the time the data is being verified so let's go to vs code and let's go to appcomponent.css let's scroll down and here we are using this input ng invalid and ng touched in the same way let me copy this css code let's paste it here and here we want to check ng touched and ng pending so if the form element is of type input and on that form element if this ng pending and ng touched css class is added then we want to show a yellow border around that input element or in fact we don't need to check this ng touched let's save the changes let's go back to the web page and here let me type something let's say so by the time you will notice this yellow border is there and after five seconds that yellow border is gone and we don't have any red border because i wanted to check for manoj this username so for the five seconds you will see yellow border and after five seconds when the data will be validated with this username we already have a user in that array so 
you can see the red border is there but if i change the username to something else then again for the five seconds it will validate the data and after five seconds once the data is validated with this username we don't have any user so now we don't see any red border so this is all about async validator in angular always remember that an async validator must return a promise or an observable and rest of the implementation is same as the sync validator